This video will show you how to build the what I think is the easiest and cheapest to build brewing control, yet it is very feature complete. We will do so using an off-the-shelf Wi-Fi switch, the Sonoff TH Origin. The control will be able to power up to 20 amps of electricity. That's enough even for big Herm setup heatings and way more than what's needed to control pumps, agitators, glyco chillers or freezers. The control will have a button that allows you to override the automatic mode and manually switch the relay off or on and three LEDs telling you the state the control is in. For example, is the relay on or off and is the control connected to Wi-Fi? Last but not least, all the software we are going to need for this tutorial is completely free, so you will only have to cover for parts. The parts should be around 30 bucks in total. If you want to support the channel, you can get the parts using the links provided below. Sounds good, let's get started. Warning, we are dealing with high voltages which you can neither see or smell, but they can kill you. Please read and obey the warning displayed on your screen carefully. The following steps should only be performed by experts. Hello experts, here's a brief outline of what we'll talk about. First, we will discuss the needed materials and tools. Then I'll show you how the actual build is performed. And last but not least, we will flash the software onto the device. Step one, required materials and tools. Core of our build is a Sonoff TH Origin, which is the official successor of the Sonoff TH16. It comes in two versions, the 20 amp version, which I have, and the 16 amps version. Chances are high, everything shown in this video also works for other Sonoff Origin devices. Let me know in the comments below if you successfully used a different device. Next up is the DS18B20 temperature sensor. It's securely attached to the TH Origin with a RJ11 connector that snaps into place. If you have an old DS18B20 with a micro aux jack, I have good news for you, there is an adapter available. You'll also need an extension cord to supply the TH Origin and from there your brewing device with power. Length can be really anything, but be sure to check that it supports the target amperages. In my case, it's 16 amps. As the TH Origin has no terminals for mass, you need something else to connect the two mass cables. The safest and easiest way is probably something like a WAGO 221. Connection to the ESP32 chip on the TH Origins PCB is established using a rainbow cable with four wires and female connections on both sides. To attach that to the PCB, we'll also need a 4x1 pin header. A leather man will become handy. We'll use it as the pliers to snap the Wi-Fi antenna cable back into place and as a file to make space to route our rainbow cable to the outside of the housing. The side cutter will be used to cut our extension cord. This is optional. You'll also need something to strip the endings of the cables. I love to use the Knipex multi strip for that. Wire end ferrules are strongly advisable and in some regions even required by law. Cheap way to ensure no cores of the cable go rogue would be to apply some solder, but consult an expert whether that's okay. If you go with wire end ferrules, you'll also of course need the corresponding cable and ferrule pliers. Note that the pliers have four jaws, this is to maximize contact, which is a good thing if you have high amperages. Next up is the USB to serial converter. It's important to set the jumper controlling the voltage for the chip to be flashed to 3.3 volts. Otherwise the chip will feel like an elementary school student being taught linear algebra in a sauna. To connect the serial converter to the PC, we'll need a mini USB cable. A screwdriver with longitudinal slot helps to pop the housing open. 
A Phillips screwdriver is required to loosen the screws of the housing. Unlike other situations in life, here it's good to have a long and thin tool. A soldering iron is required to solder the pin header into place. A third hand tool to hold the PCB and pin header while soldering. And lastly, a tiny amount of solder. Step 2. The build. Start with unpackaging the TH Origin. It offers a button and three LEDs and the RG11 socket at the top. Use the longitudinal screwdriver to open the lower side. Excuse me for bringing in a tablespoon here, it's just such an awesome tool. Remove the four screws at the back. My Phillips screwdriver was a little bit too thick, so unfortunately it looks a little bit violent. For comparison, you have the 20 amps version on the left and the 16 amps version on the right. Remove the four screws holding the PCB in place and put the screws somewhere where you don't lose them. Carefully lift the PCB out of the housing. Attention, there is a Wi-Fi antenna cable going to the antenna which is fixed to the housing. Remove the antenna cable at the connection from the PCB. Locate the four dip holes on the PCB labeled with 3B3TX0RX0 and GND. Put the pin header in place and secure it with a third hand in the middle. Solder the two pins on the outside first. Remove the third hand and solder the two other pins in the middle. Now connect the rainbow cable and take a picture of the port to color mapping for future reference. You'll thank me when the housing is closed again. Reconnect the Wi-Fi antenna cable again, for example using a Leatherman. No Wi-Fi antenna, no Wi-Fi, no beer. Now use a file and remove about a millimeter until the edge. Do the same thing on the other side of the housing. Put the PCB back into place and insert the four PCB screws again. Now put the two pieces of housing together. The rainbow cable should have just enough space. Forcefully insert the remaining four screws again to finally close the housing. The electronics are done, now it's time to connect the AC cable. Cut it in half using the side cutter and strip the insulation of the outer and all inner cables. Apply some solder or the wire end ferrules. Now let's connect the AC cable to the TH origin. The blue cables are fine as long as they go to the terminal labeled with N. The brown cables need a little bit more attention. The brown cable of the plug coming from the wall must go to L in. The brown cable of the socket going to your brewing equipment must go to L out. 
The mask cables will be connected with the Wago outside the TH origin. Untighten the screwing terminals. Insert the cables and tighten them again. Sorry for that being slightly out of order, but do the same stripping and installing the end ferrules for the other cable end as well. Now for the mass, as I previously said, we will use the Wago 221, as this is in my humble opinion the easiest way to solve this. Finally, snap the screw terminal cover back into place. Last step is to connect the rainbow cables to the USB to serial converter. Again, set the jumper to 3.3 volt. Other than that, there is only one thing that can go wrong, the data connection. Be sure to connect the RX from the serial converter to the TX of the PCB of the ESP32 stuff that's transmitted by the TH origin T needs to be received R on the serial converter and vice versa. Step 3. Flashing the software. Start with opening your device manager. To do so, simply hit the Windows key and type device manager. If you plug in your USB to serial converter now, eight ports for COM and LPT section should show up. Unfold it and it will reveal the USB serial port COM number three. Note the number, in this case three, as we will need it later. Next, open up the repository and go to the latest release by clicking on the latest batch on the very right. It doesn't really matter which number is showing up by the time you get there, simply use the highest one. And in this case, it's version 0.8.1. The release will show you three files. We just need the topmost one. In this case, it's called brick32 underscore release underscore version 0.8.1.zip. It will hold all the binaries we need. Head over to the downloads folder and unzip it. Go to the folder you just unzipped the files to and inspect the flash.md, for example, with Notepad. If the content still looks the same like displayed here, telling you that if you read this, the instructions from the YouTube video are still valid, then just follow this video. If I figure out how to flash your son off more easily in the future, the README in this case will tell you how to do so. Alright, next step is to download the flash download tool. To do so, head back to the repository and look for the flash download tool link. The website already shows flash download tool. Simply download the latest version as of August 2022, that's version 3.9.2, but any future version will most likely work just as fine. Go to your downloads folder and unzip it. Head over to the folder you've just created by unzipping and open the flash download tool executable. Windows will show you proudly how it protected you from a bad piece of software. Simply hit more info and click on run anyway. Prior to launch, the flash download tool will ask you for the chip type and the work mode. Chip type in our case is ESP32 as that is the chip driving the son of TH origin. Work mode can stay on its default value which is develop. Hit OK to confirm. Now things get interesting as the flash download tool actually opens up. On the left side, you have to select the binary images we just downloaded. Browse to the folder of the release. 
and select the respective binaries in that folder. Do that for all of the four binaries. I recommend to select them in the same order as I did here. So starting with the 0x1, next picking the 0x8 and then the 0xe and as the last binary the 0x with the four zeros behind. Now that we decided what to download to the chip, we need to decide where it goes. This is in the right column. To make things easier for you, I prefix the binary file names with their respective location in the address space where they should go. So type the respective addresses on the right side, the 0x three zeros until the 0x with the four zeros. Last step is to check all four checkboxes on the left side. The SPI speed can stay on its default value of 40 MHz. Same goes for the SPI mode that we want to set to DIO, which should also be the default value. We also want to check the do not change binary, which should also be the default value. In the lower section, it's finally time to select the COM port. We earlier took note that it's the COM port number three in my case, so I will select that. And we set the baud rate to 46,800. To put the son of TH origin into flashing mode, we have to proceed as follows. First, unplug the USB to serial converter. Then hold down the button on your son of TH origin. And while still holding down the button, reinsert the USB cable. After the USB to serial converter powered up, you can release the button on the son of TH origin again. Now the son of TH origin is ready to be flashed. Hit start on the lower left corner and wait for the process to complete. If the flashing was successful, the tool will show you a green finish sign. If the flashing wasn't successful, easiest way to retry is to close the tool, put the son of TH origin again into flashing mode and simply try again. If you are unsure whether you match the correct settings for the ESP32 download tool, refer the GitHub repository because there is a screenshot that shows you exactly which checkboxes to check and which settings to make. And that's it. Head to your brewery and power it up. Connect to power, connect and insert your temperature sensor. You can, by the way, remove the plastic cover and finally connect the device you want to control. Grab, for example, your phone, go to bricks.beerbot.com, create an account if you have done so already, open the menu and navigate to your brewery, Bricks. Hit add brick, select brick32 and copy the API key into your clipboard. Head over to the Wi-Fi settings page and connect to the aforementioned hotspot. You'll be automatically redirected to a captive portal. Hit configure Wi-Fi, it'll scan for all available networks. Tap on your personal Wi-Fi, provide the Wi-Fi credentials as well as the API key from your clipboard. Finally, hit save. Now, go back to the website and wait for the brick to appear. Then, hit the menu and head over to equipment. The last step is to create a device, for example, a mesh tongue. All that's left to be done is to map the relay and the temperature sensor of the brick to the device by drag and dropping. If you have more than one brick, you can also map more than one relay to the heating field to achieve higher wattages or use the second brick to control your cooling, pumps or agitators. Hit the blue save button and the device is ready to be used. From there, the possibilities are pretty much endless. Simplest way to get started is to head over to the manual section, activate the device and simply set the target temperature.
I hope this video helped you to build your own brewing control. If it did, be sure to like this video or even subscribe. Hopefully see you in the next one. Cheers!